Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with our August 1st edition of Wall Street Winners and our August 1st edition of our Disclaimer. So I really thought we were supposed to see a good seasonal rally uh, starting really at the beginning of July, but it didn't really happen, but it's happening now. So better late than never, but I had started to get more bearish because it didn't occur. You see, normally when you get a, when there's a supposed to be normal seasonal bullishness and it doesn't occur, that's bearish. But now we're back to normal. So I got to take away that bearishness that I felt, but still this rally's not that great. So we still have to put a tinge of bearishness so that when this rally ends at the end of August, we should see the uh, dip that we're expecting in the fall to come on harder than normal. Here we can see a lot of new buying pressure here. Uh, you can see the little green line, that's buying pressure. Selling pressure is evaporated and the black line is ADX. And when it goes up, it's confirming that we have a bull market going on here. Now it's a mini bull at this point. It certainly has not reversed the mega bull that we're in the middle of, but we have a little mini bull inside of a mega bull. We're breaking some significant highs here. We're breaking highs, highs, highs. We finally broke a high over here. That's good. And notice that the purple predictor also broke to new highs. So that's also positive. Now, um, seasonally, we still have to call it, we're in a neutral period. Uh, here during the summer, uh, but we'll get into the, the breakdown of that seasonal in just a second. Utes have just been exploding. If we br And this is a, a seasonally bullish period for them. If we break these highs, we'll put this on, go, switch it from neutral to bullish. This is looking pretty good for Utes. So take a look at the red line. That's the line we want to look at. We finally were in a period when we should see sideways price action. There's the bullishness we were supposed to get starting at the end of June. We never got this first leg, uh, but we've, we're getting the second leg here. Maybe it's coming in a little bit late. That's not a problem. So we could see bullish price action over the next week or so, and then look for stagnation. And then we get the big drop of the year. Now, where's the money coming from for this bull market? Well, look at this. Our asset allocation model show, has broken out to new six-week highs, telling us that people are getting out of the bond market and into the stock market. Well, where are they putting their money? Well, they're getting a little frisky, a little risky, but not that much. So they're really, you saw the youths were up strong. The bond people are taking their money out of the bond market and they're putting it in things like youths and high dividend paying stocks. And that's what's driving the market higher. Not the frisky, risky stocks. Over here, we saw we got, had these big gaps down, but European stocks, IFA is doing quite well here following along the US. The yield curve. Take a look in the lower left-hand corner, basically flat. That means a recession's coming up, and that still means there's going to be more bear market. We're, look at this collapsorama. I mean, this is insane. So it's still ever so slightly positive, but as you can see in the lower left-hand, it's flat. And if the Fed raises interest rates just, you know, a quarter or a half, that'll make it negative. So it's going negative. There's no question about it. And the fact that it came down so hard, how is that possible? Well, it's possible because bond yields, the 10-year note yields came down while the Fed was raising short-term interest rates up. So we had this seesaw that caused the yield curve to collapse and how could the 10-year yield go down when inflation's at 9%, 9.1%? Well, it's because the bond market, they think we're going to have a huge recession next year. A huge recession, like 2008 scale recession. And so yields are collapsing. Here's the bond slowly creeping up, slowly creeping up. Purple predictor, you can see, is much stronger. This is on balance volume, much stronger than the price action, which shows that the smart money really is looking for much lower interest rates. 
Here's our indicators for bonds. I mean, what, what can I see? Bond yields are going down. I mean, all the indicators are telling us that. A dollar. Now, if bond yields are coming down, now let's, t let's break this apart. The ECB has finally come to Jesus, and then they believe that there's going to be high inflation. <laughs> like, hello, six months ago, we knew this was happening. But Christine Lagarde, she likes to do monetary policy by looking in the rearview mirror. So she's just come to the conclusion that uh, maybe this is not transitory, this evil inflation. So she's starting to raise interest rates and raising them probably faster than the Fed in the coming months. And so the dollar is going to remain under pressure near term. If the dollar is under pressure, then that means bull market in gold. We're going to get back up to this resistance level at 1800. Uh, we've got the downtrend line coming in just under that. We've got this low coming in just over that. We've got this low coming in just under it. So if we can get up to 1820, I might start to get bullish, okay? My, my, but let's not get carried away. But I might, I might. We'll take a look at it. Okay, our indicators, we've got two weak bull markets up here. Let's call this one neutral. Uh, but this is clearly making higher highs and higher lows. And our indicator down here, look at the correlation with the price of gold. I mean, really incredible. So we're, we're finally, our, uh, the majority of our indicators here are bullish. First time in months and months and months. Crude oil. We're going to get a little bit of a rally, but really, you know, if we're going into recession, we're going to see oil prices drop more. Now, right now, demand is slowly going down, but supply is tight. Supply is still tight. The Americans are not pumping. Even though Joe Biden kissed the ring of, of uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, um, there's a lot of countries that just can't keep up with the quota. So we're really not seeing much increase in supply. So it's still very, very tight. Bitcoin, we got this stupid bull market. I mean, we're making higher highs and higher lows, but notice that the smart money is starting to sell this rally. So we got it back up. We 20,000 has been this number, this cycle number that everybody's focused on. Are we going to hold 20,000? Are we going to hold 20,000? So we've got back up to 24,000, but the smart money is starting to sell. And I think the fundamentals are still bearish. This bull market is so weak it's, you know, Bitcoin has become highly correlated with the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has a nice bull market. This is a weak bull market, even though, uh, so I think this is, this is actually bearish price action. Okay, freebies, love having you here. But wouldn't, wouldn't you like to make some money? Well, it's easy. Just subscribe to the fully paid up member version. Go to WSW 2021. Follow the recommendations. We keep, keep making money year after year after year for 27 straight years. Quick, how you doing?